sponsored by the Securities and Exchange Commission of Nigeria. Welcome to Ion Nigeria's Capital Markets. This is one of several breweries constructed by Guinness Nigeria, a blue chip company by any standard on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. But what is less obvious is how strong corporate governance has supported the growth of its trademark style drink in Nigeria and the overall performance of the company. Today we take a look at corporate governance in the Nigerian capital market and what regulators are doing to raise the bar. Well, first, uh, at the Security and Exchange Commission, we, we, we feel that good corporate governance is absolutely a prerequisite. Uh, and we believe the capital markets foster uh, good corporate governance. We indeed actually feel that it's a competitiveness tool, both for an individual company uh, and for Nigeria as a whole. Uh, you may be familiar with the World Economic Forum's Global uh, Competitiveness Index, which it produces on an annual basis. The most recent one uh, ranks Nigeria in terms of competitiveness 127 out of 139 countries. I actually think it's an unfair ranking, uh, but I think that there's not as much information about good practice, about good governance uh, in Nigeria. Because of the importance of uh, corporate governance, when I became the chairman of the SEC, I set up a committee to look at corporate governance because um, there was a general um, the view many people expressed, and I shared that view, was that some of the failures of some of our companies had to do with corporate governance. Weak corporate governance was largely responsible for the crisis that rocked Nigeria's banking sector in 2009, with investors losing billions of dollars in the failed institutions. For a very long time, um, banks have had different levels of, of, of corporate governance. Um, some of it is historical. Uh, you have banks that um, had a strong focus on governance, and you had others where um, they were basically um, key man dominated. Uh, and, um, uh, the boards were ineffective um, and the shareholders did not ca call management to account. Um, what we saw clearly was um, a situation in which uh, a number of CEOs basically did what they wanted, um, both with the bank and with the subsidiaries. Uh, we had issues of outright conversion of bank um, monies and that could only happen uh, where you didn't have proper board oversight um, and shareholder controls. However, one company that has prospered on the back of strong corporate governance is Guinness Nigeria, one of the largest non-bank companies listed on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. About five years ago, um, Diageo was looking at, at how to strengthen corporate, corporate governance um, in its listed companies in Africa. And one of the things that we did is that we engaged a consultant to work with the board to do a diagnosis exercise. So where are we on corporate governance? What does it mean to directors? What does it mean on day-to-day -day practice? And so we identified areas where we're pretty strong, and then we identified areas of improvement. If you look at our numbers and you track our performance over the last five years, you will find a, a correlation between the time that I referenced earlier about when the board you know, did that diagnosis and started putting you know, uh, more structures in place around co corporate governance and our financial performance. So you will see, for instance, that in a competitive market, um, we're not just growing um, revenue or, or, or share or, or even shipping out more volumes. The bottom line is getting stronger. So, so our, our shareholders actually have better return on their investment and you can trace that to, to, to good corporate governance practices because all the areas where, for instance, there may, may be, have been leakages have now come under you know, regulatory oversight of the board, which now meets regularly as a senior manager in charge of, charge of governance and controls, reporting into them on internal controls and how strong they are. And where there are weaknesses, they are immediately addressed. The Securities and Exchange Commission has recognized the importance of corporate governance for the capital market and has introduced a new code to strengthen corporate governance practice in Nigeria. The beauty of this particular set of rules that we've come out with is that it is meant to represent effective governance, but not governance that suffocates. Because we want to allow companies, it's important that the entrepreneurial spirit, innovation, is not killed. The code seeks to strengthen governance practices 
essentially in three ways. First of all, he seeks to strengthen board processes. And then he also seeks to talk about things like the board members themselves, what kind of roles and responsibilities should they have on the board? What kind of terms of reference should be in place to guide their roles and responsibilities? How should they have board meetings? It talks about things like um, family members. Um, it says that you shouldn't have more than two family members on a particular board. And so if you have a family established business, that would definitely be a challenge on how to um, comply with that. The other area where the code seeks to address is ensuring um, we have stronger assurance functions. Um, it talks about internal audits. Every organization is expected to have an internal audit function. Um, in the past, you find out that a number of public companies didn't even have internal audit functions, and the code is trying to redress that. It specifically even said that where you think you do not need an internal audit function, then you should explain why and explain how you are uh, um, obtaining assurance. And then you have um, the risk management function. In Nigeria, you find out that it's mostly banks that have established risk management organizations. Meanwhile, every organization is faced with risk. You are in the business to do, you have risk as long as you are in business. How do you manage this risk? What policies and procedures have you put in place to enable you manage this risk? Do you even know the risk that you are facing? Most times we go out and maybe you are interviewing directors. You find out that different people have different understanding of the risk the organization is facing because people have not done an assessment of their risk. They've not identified it. They've not quantified it. They've also not put policies and procedures in place to effectively manage those risks. And that's what the code is trying to address. It also talks about things like whistleblowing. If you look at most of the things that have happened in the past, the corporate governance infractions, a number of them have been brought to the fore based on whistleblowing issues. People have blown the whistle. In Nigeria, most people do not like to blow the whistle, either because the policies people have in place do not protect the people that are blowing the whistle, so it doesn't guarantee anonymity, and that's what the code is trying to redress that. And then lastly, it also seeks to guarantee, tra guarantee transparency. It talks about a number of things that needs to be disclosed, which also ties to IFRS that's coming to play in Nigeria. You know, with IFRS, there are a number of things that you need to be disclosing now as the board. You have to disclose remuneration, disclose things on sustainability. So we believe that once you can rely on the information, and once information is delivered in a timely manner, it will check abuse. Because as Justice Louis Brandeis of the U.S. Supreme Court said, there is nothing more effective as a disinfectant than sunlight. So we're working on provide, we're already providing significant training uh, to board directors. We started uh, in 2010. But what, what our aspiration is, is that in the not so distant future that we'll actually start to insist that board directors of listed companies must be certified. And therefore anyone who's not certified will not be on the board of a listed company in Nigeria. Another element of the reforms to promote greater transparency and accountability is the introduction of a new financial reporting standard, or IFRS, from next year. Well, IFRS, really, what it brings about is a standardization of reporting uh, across different jurisdictions. So, you know, historically, countries have specific standards they have built up over time that addresses peculiarities. And in particular, depending on the maturity of the environment, maybe the shareholders or the market as a whole, these standards may be well behind what is normally um, acceptable uh, in a global context. So IFRS will standardise that, which is great. If companies are required to give far more significant disclosure, balance sheet, P&L, cash flow statement, notes and, and commentary around that on a quarterly or, or half yearly basis, for instance, you know, that, that um, enables shareholders and investors to, to scrutinise you know, and, and detect problems far earlier than would be the case you know, under the current, current regime. Beyond observing fresh accounting standards, complying with the new code will present some challenges. And then there are a host of other things. It's also said that among the directors, you should have at least one independent director. It's a bit of a challenge for every company to be able to find an independent director that's truly independent. They've come up with a um, definition of who an independent director is. I know CBN had tried to do this in the past. Till today, some people are still struggling 
to find independent directors, not because we don't have them in Nigeria, but it's, that, that would pose a bit of a challenge to some organizations. Little research is available on the link between corporate governance and investment returns on the Nigerian boss. Studies in other markets, however, indicate that companies with strong corporate governance outperform those with weak corporate governance by as much as 16%. Clearly, companies looking to attract more investors should take the new regulations seriously. Our clients give us money because they expect us to deliver returns to them and we would not put money into an organization where we believe uh, there is weak corporate governance and as I've explained to you what the corporate governance is so if there is weak corporate governance we might have the belief that the organization just because of that might not deliver the return and if they're not going to deliver their re that return then we take the money elsewhere. It only stands to reason the stronger the corporate governance the better an institution it is. And the better an institution it is, the less reliance it, reliant it is on one person or one individual, but rather on a sound business model. And companies with a sound business model will tend to have repeatable performance, performance that you can count on year in, year out. And when you look at that, it takes a little bit of risk premium out of them. The SEC has set the rules, and it's now time for companies to comply. It won't be easy. But analysts say the move to strengthen corporate governance in Nigeria's capital market are essential for a sustainable market recovery.